We're all guilty of it at one point or another. Student putting off a test, an assignment, studying. My name is Steve and I'm from College Express. Today we're going to go over the 10 ways to avoid procrastination. One helpful tip would be to invest in a planner or use the calendar app on your phone. Uh, get, keeping track of your assignments just by writing them down will help you stay on top of the tasks and get them done beforehand without even stressing. Setting smaller, more reachable goals creates a less intimidating, more obtainable mindset and avoids procrastination in probably the best way possible. An example of this would be a few nights before a test or an exam, set aside to study a few chapters every night up into that day of the test and not tackling it the night before. Piggybacking off of point number two, uh, once you have those goals set in mind and what you want to do each week, uh, set deadlines for them. Say Tuesday night you want to study for three chapters, Wednesday five, Thursday two, and then you're set for the test on Friday. That's probably one of the best ways to stay manageable and not overwhelmed. The famous quote, oh, I'll eventually get to it, has been used time and time again, but the sad thing is, eventually never comes. Setting a deadline allows you to stay on top of that eventually, such as maybe completing an essay a day or two before its actual due date to give you time to review the essay and make sure you've got everything out that you wanted to. Distractions, we've all got them. They're that little thing there sitting to the left of you or to the right of you, just staring at you. Yeah, you know, your, your phone. We're talking about your phone here. Shut it off, shut the TV off. Both of these things are two of the biggest distractions when it comes to studying, working on homework, getting ready for tests. They're only gonna pull your mind elsewhere. An alternative way to do this would maybe to change up your workspace. Instead of sitting in your room, your dorm room, your bedroom, go to the library. Go to a quiet space down the hall. Somewhere where you can just focus primarily on your work. Literally timing yourself is probably another effective way to stay on top of your work. Experts say to set an alarm for anywhere between 50 and 90 minutes and then grind for that chunk of time. And once your alarm goes off, it's time for a break. An article from The Atlantic said that there's a sweet spot when it comes to studying, studying for about 52 minutes and then taking a 17 minute break. Well, this is pretty self-explanatory. Literally just take a break. 10, 15, 20, half hour. Uh, just go for a walk, have a snack, do something just to kind of recoup, uh, regather yourself so you don't have a complete burnout and you can refocus on what you were working on previously. You just hit one of your goals. Congrats! Uh, definitely reward yourself for that. Using incentives is the best way to accomplish those smaller task goals that we talked about earlier in the video. Uh, say you studied for an hour, go watch an episode of your favorite show. That way it gives you a way to relax and also a reason to keep going. Nobody likes tackling the hard stuff first. Nobody. Uh, but it's the best way to stay ahead of the game uh, and avoid procrastinating it any longer. Because once it's done, it's done. You don't have to worry about it afterwards. Those smaller assignments seem that much easier and probably take a lot less time than what you did for the hard assignments. Nobody likes talking about the assignments that they have, especially to other people. But telling someone might be actually a good idea. Um, having someone there that knows about your goals and what you need to accomplish in a certain amount of time, whether it be your roommate, a close friend, even a teacher, just someone there to hold you accountable to get your work done. Hey, and once it's done, you're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It's time to celebrate.